Hello and welcome to my second presentation on New Rack. This video goes over some of the setup options available to you and compatibility with other doors, as well as going over the individual effects and modules contained within New Rack. So for those that are still unsure what New Rack is, it's essentially an effects rack with a difference. You bolt together custom modules and then build your own user interface for these modules which mashes them all into a single contained interface. Now I want to start today by looking at uh, its usage in AUM in this case and the fact that we actually ship two different versions of this plugin. One version supports MIDI and the other one doesn't. So when you go to AUM and you go to add the uh, audio unit extension uh, just be aware that there'll be two entries. There'll be a new rack FX and a new rack FX MIDI. And it's the second one I'm going to pick today because only the MIDI version has all the modules available. Now I've never really highlighted what modules are available so I want to go over that with you now. So what we're looking at here is a basic interface for new rack. And to add anything to the rack you've got to press the uh, edit button and then you press the plus button to pick an effect from one of these eight defined categories. So the categories are modulation, time-based, spectral, dynamic, filter, automation, visual and other. So let's take a sneak look inside each category and see what's available. Starting with the modulation. So we've got a, a chorus, a flanger, a phaser, a tremolo and a vocal doubler. I don't think any of them need any further explanation. On the time based, we've got a stereo delay, a tape delay and a reverb. Now moving on to spectral, we've got parametric and graphic EQs. We've got a pitch shifter, auto pan, bit crunch, a tube overdrive and a distortion. Now in dynamic, we've got a velocity control, a compressor, a noise gate and a gate stroke gapper. Now I'm aware some of those might need a little more explanation and I'll do some demos of those at the end of the video. In particular the velocity control and the gate stroke gapper. I think they are probably the most interesting ones in this group. And now onto the filter section which has a multi filter which is basically low pass, high pass, band pass and so on. Uh, a low pass, high pass filter which is used for filtering um, before an effect or after an effect. A uh, frequency splitter which takes um, a certain bandwidth of frequencies and splits it into two outputs. Um, and the, finally the classic filters which has um, Mugen over Oberheim um, emulators. Under automation we have an XY touchpad, automate and MIDI control. And those latter two I'm going to go over with late, later in this uh, video. In the visual section we have three options. We have VU meters, LED meters and a spectrum analyzer. And finally in other we have a splitter, a mixer, a gain control and a hard limiter. Now this is not an exhaustive list and I've been adding them at a, quite a rate so this will expand over time. Before we start looking at any examples I want to go over a couple of setup parameters that are available in settings. In particular there's one on automation and another uh, on multi-channel mode. And it's important to get these set up right, otherwise the uh, new rack may not function correctly within your DAW. Now, as you can see here, I've set up two different racks A and B. There's nothing on rack C. And I'm just going to go into AUM settings. And if you look down at the uh, particular channel we are on, you'll see that there's a rack A, B and C. And if we click on rack A, all we're getting is a list of nameless parameters. And there is a good reason for this. Because unlike AUM, which is written very well and supports us changing parameters on the fly, a lot of these DAWs do not. Now if you exit edit mode and go to the menu and pick settings, you'll see that there are some options in here, one of which is automation. And if you look at that uh, particular tab, you'll see that we're installed in compatibility mode. But we can switch to advanced mode which requires a restart of the app. So you're going to exit AUM and come back in. Now once you've launched in advanced mode, if we go back to the AUM settings, we'll see that we have um, the racks exposed as A and B because I've only got stuff on A and B. 
and we actually have named effects on here and we can click through and find the actual named parameters. Now in an ideal world everyone would support that mode but sadly they don't so you have to be in that mode if you're running in AUM and want named parameters. Now although I haven't tried it myself I've heard that Zen Beats also supports this mode and works with named parameters. Uh, hopefully eventually everyone will. Now another option I want to discuss here is the multi-channel mode. By default it's in single input mode and the three little uh, blue buttons on the left hand side of the display shift racks. But if you go into settings we can switch between um, single channel or multi-channel mode. Just be aware that when you do switch again you've got to reboot. Now once you've reloaded the plugin uh, you'll notice the little um, multi-channel button on the top left hand corner under the menu can now be toggled to multi-channel mode. Now when we're in single channel mode which is the default all input arrives on bus A and then is routed with this blue buttons, these three blue buttons through one of three different racks. In multi-channel mode you can set up three completely independent racks and then route external audio through them. I'm just going to go over that here in AUM. Now you need to pick the option Multibus Audio Unit Instances from the pop-up menu and then we can select a bus from this little pop-up menu to say uh, which uh, rack we want to feed that channel through. Now while I think it's obvious what multi-channel mode does, it's not so obvious what single channel does. So here's a bit of an example. So as you can see there, as I switched between these three blue buttons on the left, it actually switched the rack of components that that audio was going through. So enough theory, let's just have a listen to one or two of the new additional modules and um, I'll explain how a couple of these work because it's not so obvious from my uh, going over them earlier. So that's the raw input from Chameleon, so let's engage the gate. As you can see there I was in manual mode and in that mode you can vary the speed using the speed knob and I was also changing the smoothness. So now I'm going to try and sync to beat. So to do this I'm going to turn on the metronome and I'm going to have to start the transport for this to actually work. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's one of the latest modules for uh, gated strings and it's very give it gives a very pleasing trancy sound now one of the benefits of multi-channel mode is the fact we can do sidechain compression uh, here I've got a copy of Digisticks running on a separate channel and I've got a simple four on the floor drum beat and I'm feeding that to bus B of new rack and then letting the sound fall straight through using pass through so we can actually hear that <laughs> Okay, I think you get the idea. Now, within New Rack, we have a number of automation options, including like XY touchpad and MIDI control. And there's another control which I've not shown yet called velocity control. Now, velocity control can be placed anywhere in the signal path and it measures the RMS power and then uses that to automate various knobs and sliders within other modules. And I want to demonstrate that now. So by simply pressing the assign button on the uh, velocity control, we can pick any component within the rack and then any knob within that component. So I've just picked the uh, custom filters cut off. Now, by adjusting the settings on the velocity pad, the bass and sensitivity, we can control the range that the knob is actually moved. Now, the great thing about velocity control is that it can, it can control up to three different elements within that rack. So I've flicked onto controller lane B, and we can uh, set up the um, the cutoff frequency of this um, custom filter uh, to work alongside the original filter. So another automation module that we haven't covered so far is the MIDI automation. Now, as you can see from AUM settings here, I have a Korg Nano Studio connected, which is just a Bluetooth keyboard, which allows me to uh, play controller data in to uh, my iPad. Now, I'm making sure that uh, we are taking input from that Nano Studio. And if I turn my uh, one of my knobs, controller 20, you'll see that controller 20 is actually controlling the delay on the tape delay. Uh, module. So let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, I think that just about wraps up because I'm out of time. But uh, I'll see you in the next instalment. Thanks for watching.